Hello you guys and welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be nine real horror stories of people who went missing and who were never found. Um, it is from an article off of Vox, V-O-X dot com. So let's just go right into this video. Before I start, I do want to quickly note it is 12.30 a.m. past midnight. I live alone. I've never heard my apartment this quiet before. The people upstairs are finally quiet. There's not a plane in the sky like there usually is. There's no cars driving around. I've never been in this apartment when it has been so quiet. So it's a little bit freaky how I sat down to film three creepy videos. So pray for me. Nine real life horror stories of people who disappeared and were never found. Number one, the Martin family, Oregon, 1958. Some of the best details in stories like these have to do with the lives of people who disappeared, left behind. What actually happened to the Martin family isn't much of a mystery. They likely drove off the road on the way home, their car plunged, plunging into the river below, but the evocative snapshots of a, fa of a life never resumed make this entry particularly eerie. It highlights all the mundane details of life that might flash before your own eyes in the instant everything changes. Number two, Bobby Dunbar, Louisiana, 1912. Fans of this American life will recognize this story as it was the center of one of the show's best episodes. When young Bobby Dunbar, just four years old, wandered off from his family on a group outing, he was never seen again. It's possible he fell from a railroad trust trestled and drowned. It's also possible he was abducted by a strange man who was seen lurking in the area, but will never, but will likely never know. Because authorities thought they found Bobby Dunbar and didn't realize it was another child entirely, who simply s stepped into Bobby's life until 2004, long after it would have been possible to solve the case. That one's kind of creepy. Number three, Billy Gaffney, New York, 1927. The four-year-old Billy Gaffney was left to play with a three-year-old friend in the hallway of his Brooklyn apartment building for just a mo few moments. The two boys disappeared. The three-year-old was eventually found on the roof of the apartment building and he, and he said the boogeyman, an elderly gentleman with a gray mustache, had spirited Billy away. Serial killer Albert Fish, who fits the boogeyman description, confessed to Billy's murder years, late, years later, but Billy's remains have yet to be found. Number four, Mary Moroni, I hope I'm saying that right, Illinois, 1930. Mary Moroni, <laughs> just two, is an example of a reoccurring motive of the Charlie Project's archives. Family desperate for cheap child care during the Great Depression who simply trusted the wrong person. Moroni disappeared after her parents allowed her to spend the day with a woman who called herself Julia Otis. A woman purporting to be Otis's cousin later wrote to the family to say Otis was love hungry. After the loss of a husband and her child, and that she would care for Mary. Mary has never been found and she would be in her 80s today. She may still be alive and have no idea who she is. Number five, Georgia Weckler, Wisconsin, 1947. I really hope I'm saying all these names right. If I'm not, I'm sorry. The sad story of the disappearance of Georgia Weckler, eight, is haunting, is haunting for one specific reason. Curiously, prior to her disappearance, Georgia, I wonder if her name's just Georgia, had made several remarks indicating that she especially feared being kidnapped. What prompted this, we'll never likely know. Number six, Evelyn Hartley, Wisconsin, 1953. The disappearance of Evelyn Hartley is straight out of a horror movie. The teenager was babysitting one evening when she didn't call to to check in with her parents at their appointed time. 
Her father went to check on her and found a completely locked house with the lights and radio still on and no Evelyn inside. Signs of a struggle and forced entry led to a desperate search for the girl, but she was never found. Pools of blood may have belonged to Evelyn, as well as eyewitness accounts of a girl who might have been her make this story all the more mysterious. Number 7. Bruce Creeman, California, 1960. Bruce Creeman disappeared while attending camp. He was playing with a few other boys just a short distance from his group when he became separated from them and was never seen again. Initially believing him to be lost in the San Gabriel Mountains, authorities mounted a massive search but were unable to find either the boy or his remains. Now, however, authorities believe him to have come in contact with Mac Ray Edwards, one of America's least known yet most pro prolific serial killers who worked on highway construction and perhaps buried the remains of, the, of his victims beneath the asphalt where they would never be found. Number 8. Marjorie West, Pennsylvania, 1938. The West family went out after church for an outing in the country, one that involved Marjorie Four and her 11-year-old sister going to pick wild flowers. The sister went to talk to their parents and Marjorie disappeared from the middle of a wide open field. This might seem like a standard issue kidnapping story, save for the fact that Marjorie's life might have might well have intersected with Georgia Tan, the woman who ran the Tennessee Children's Home Society. Praise for her ability to find homes for children who needed them, Tan actually abducted more than 1,200 children and then placed them with rich families in far-off states like California, often for a hefty fee. If Marjorie did somehow meet Tan or someone who worked with her, she could be alive today and unaware of her true identity. Number 9. The Sauter Children, West Virginia, 1945. By far the eeriest story in the Charlie Project archives is that of the five Sauter children who all disappeared under suspicious circumstances on Christmas Eve night. The children, five out of ten siblings, asked their parents if they might stay up late and play with their new toys rather than go directly to bed. Their parents agreed and turned on turned in for the night and a series of strange events transpired. First, the phone rang. The children's mother answered and the voice on the other end asked for someone the mother had never heard of. When she said so, the voice laughed and hung up. The mother later realized all the lights in the house were on, the shades were drawn, and the doors were unlocked. She awakened again by a sound on the roof and then she woke up for the final time around 1.30 a.m. with the realization that the house was on fire. She, her husband, and the other five children got out, but the five children who asked to stay up late never emerged from the infer inferno. When the father went to climb his ladder up into their bedrooms on the second floor, he could not find it. It was later found dragged away from the house. The official conclusion was that the children had died in the house fire, but the Sodders never stopped believing their children kids were still alive right up until the two parents died and then were encouraged by a strange photograph mailed to them in the 60s purporting to show one of this one of their sons as a grown adult did the solder children die in the fire set by never caught perpetrators perhaps but the tantalizing thought that they might have been kidnapped might still indeed be alive perhaps in italy has kept some sliver of hope but this strange case might find resolution Definitely number nine is the creepiest for me, how five out of ten children just all of a sudden vanished and the house was set on fire. That cannot be a coincidence in my opinion. But that is it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will be posting videos every single day in the month of October, so I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.